Um, hi everyone. Okay, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, so in this lesson, we're going to be writing the uh, simulation of the three gene model we talked about in the last video. So this is the uh, three gene model where um, gene one is activating gene two, and then gene two is activating gene three, and then gene three is coming back to uh, repress gene one. So um, if we program this simulation correctly, we should get uh, some oscillations out of this. So it'll be uh, kind of interesting to see. So, uh, so okay, let's get started. So I'm just gonna um, copy and paste some of the libraries we're gonna import. So we're gonna be using um, matplotlib. And then again, this line is just because uh, I had to update to um, the latest Mac OS. And for some reason I had to include this line uh, for it to work now. Um, and then we're gonna be using uh, scipy.integrate, uh, the ODE in solver, and then um, NumPy. Um, okay, so if you guys have been watching the past couple um, programming videos, you should kind of uh, kind of already know a little bit what we're going to be doing here. So I'm, I'm going to maybe go through this a little bit faster and uh, kind of assume that you guys sort of sort of know what's going on. Um, so we'll start with our initial conditions. So remember, we have three genes this time, so we need uh, we need three numbers in this array here. So we're going to start with a zero for all of the genes. But um, you guys can also like play around with different initial conditions too and, and just kind of see uh, what happens when you change these numbers around. But for now, we'll just start with, with a zero for everything. And then, um, so this is just defining the, uh, the set of time points we're gonna be solving over. So we're using numpy.lin uh, space. Um, we'll start at time zero and go to time 200 uh, with 100, um, 100 time points in that in that space. And then, so next, we, we just need to uh, like write down all of our parameters. So um, let me just make sure I have this right. Yeah, so we, we need three Ks for the, uh, the production rates, um, three gammas for the degradation rates, and then, uh, so I just use the same, I use the same parameters for all of the hill functions, but if you guys wanted to, if you wanted to make it more complex, you could actually have different uh, parameters in each hill function, but I just use the same C and N for, uh, for all of them. Um, okay, so we need three Ks, uh, three gammas, and then C and N. So, okay. I'm just gonna copy and paste to make it easier. And then I'm gonna keep all of, uh, for each one, I'm just gonna keep it um, 0.5 for the uh, max production rate and 0.1. But again, you guys should should definitely like change those around and kind of uh, experiment with different parameters and, and see what you get. And then, we'll make N9 for now. Remember N is uh, the exponent that everything's being put to in the, uh, in the hill function, and then we'll make um, C1. Okay. And then, yes, yeah, so then we just kind of put everything in this uh, params array here, just to kind of, and again, like I say, every time you guys could just put the numbers right into this array, but I just like to write it like this, just so we're, we're keeping track of everything and sort of keeping things organized. Okay. And then so next we need to write um, the actual function that's going to uh, be going into the solver. So like usual, we'll just call this uh, sim, but you guys can call the function whatever you want, but I'm just calling it sim. It's going to take a uh, variables argument, um, a time point argument, and then a params argument. So the first thing we're going to do is just um, we need to assign a uh, we need to assign the variables. So, so this is where the, the initial condition is going to be passed in. So we're going to be passing in this array um, through the variables argument and then assigning um, 
G1, gene 1, will be assigned uh, this first element of the initial condition array, and then G2 will be assigned to the uh, second element, and then gene 3 will be assigned to the third element. And then also, like, for every iteration of the solver, uh, like, the, the variables argument is what's going to be keeping track of the levels of uh, gene 1, gene 2, and gene 3. Um, okay, so next we have to, uh, we have to assign the... Uh, the parameters, oops. So if you guys, sorry if I'm going through this a little bit like fast this time, but um, if you guys have been watching like the previous, uh, the previous programming videos, you should kind of, uh, kind of already be starting to get used to, to writing this, uh, this function, hopefully. Okay, so this is just like usual. So um, the params array is going to be passed into uh, this function here. So we just pass it in here, and then we assign all of them uh, locally within this uh, sim function. Just assign it to whatever. So like k sub one will be assigned uh, to the first element in the params array. Which is which is k sub one that we defined up here. Um, so it'll be passed in through this params argument and then assigned locally uh, within the function here. Um, okay, so then the last thing to do is to actually write down the ODEs. So d g one d t equals. Um, okay, let me just make sure I'm getting this right. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm just checking to, uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, let me just finish typing this out and then I'll, uh, I'll explain everything. Okay, so um, let me just make sure I got everything right. Yeah, okay. So so these terms here are, uh, like we've been talking about, these are just the hill functions. So the first one is a uh, repression hill function. So um, gene three is repressing the transcription of gene one. So that's why it only has uh, the constant in the numerator. And then these two are activation hill functions. So for this one here, gene one is activating the transcription of gene two. So that's why we have gene one in both the numerator and denominator of the hill function. And then basically same thing here for gene three. Uh, gene two is activating the transcription of gene three. So we have gene two um, to the nth power uh, in the numerator and denominator. And then, so each one of course is uh, like we've been doing in the past videos, it's just multiplied by the maximum, uh, the maximum production rate. And then um, we're, we're subtracting uh, the degradation rate times the current level of the, uh, of the protein. Um, okay, so then last thing here is to just return uh, return the ODEs. And so this is all we need for this function. And then we'll pass it into the solver. So remember, ODE int is, uh, is the solver that we're using from uh, scipy.integrate. Um, okay. And then, so, so the syntax for this is, first argument is our function name. So we called it sim. So just uh, the name of the function there, um, the initial conditions 
um, the time points we're solving over. And then, like I usually say, like this is a little bit of a weird syntax, but args equals parentheses, params, uh, comma. Remember, even, though, even if there's only one argument, we still need the comma here for it to work. And then, uh, yeah, so we have the, the function name, um, the uh, initial conditions we passed in here, um, the time points passed in here, and then uh, params, this array of params passed in here. Um, okay. And then, so like usual, I'm just gonna actually just copy and paste the uh, matplotlib code. Cause um, like I usually tell you guys, like I don't really think it's worth it to like memorize all the matplotlib code, but I will kind of explain what's happening here because it's uh, a little bit more complicated than what we've been doing. Cause there's uh, we're only using three subplots this time. So this, this line here, um, is just defining a plot with three subplots and then uh, yeah, so we need um, X1 X2 and X3 those are going to be the names of the three uh, subplots and then three here just means we want uh, three subplots and then um, share X equals true means they're going to share um, You guys will see when we when we see, when we see the graph, but they're going to have uh, the same scale for the x-axis but we don't really want them to have the same skill for the y-axis, so that's false. Um, okay, and then line one, uh, this is kind of like what we've, what we've been doing, so this is just plotting, um, we want to plot the time points, uh, yeah, the time points, and then um, every row, every row for the first column of uh, this y matrix, remember y is our output matrix here, so we want every row, um, for the first column. So that will give us all of the values for gene one um, at each time point. And then we're labeling that, uh, labeling that uh, G1, and then we're coloring it blue. And then, so since we're, since we're plotting this on X1, this will be in the first subplot. And then, so we just do the same thing uh, for, uh, for gene two and gene three. So for gene two, we want um, the, the second column and then all of the rows in the uh, Y matrix or output matrix. And then and then gene three, we just want um, the third column. And then again, all the rows. And then just putting some labels, just uh, the Y axis is just the number of uh, the proteins. And then the X axis is time. And then this line here is actually just, uh, is setting the legend that'll have all of our, all of our uh, labels. Um, okay, so I think that's everything. So just uh, maybe look over it really quick but yeah I think that's everything so we'll give it a try and hopefully it'll work yeah okay so here we go so um, yeah this is what I was trying to tell you guys about like the uh, the oscillations with this um, 3g network um, so it's kind of cool because I mean yeah it's uh, it's only only three genes but we can sort of set the parameters right to get this uh, cool property out of it. How, since it's it's sort of cascading down, it's an, it, it's an activation cascade that has a negative, uh, a negative feedback. So this step here where gene three is uh, repressing gene one, that's the negative feedback components. So that's why we're getting these, uh, these oscillations here. Cause I mean, if we, if we sort of break it down like step by step, it's like, uh, yeah, gene one is, start, is, is being produced and as gene one is produced, that leads to gene two being produced. And as gene two is being produced, that leads to gene three being produced. But remember, as gene three is being produced, that actually stops gene one from being produced. So that's why we get these uh, these waves like this. And so it's like I said in the last video, um, this is kind of similar. It's actually like very similar to this uh, this famous um, this famous thing called the Goodwin oscillator. So I made a couple changes just to make things uh, more relevant to what we've been talking about. Um, I think in I think in his system it was uh, I think he only had um, a hill function for one of them, and then the rest were just like uh, linear, um, like linear terms here. So I made a small change, but uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty similar. And I think if you guys want something uh, like a, a more technical read on this stuff, I, I would definitely recommend his paper, and I'll put a link to it in the uh, description too. Yeah, it's the, uh, the, the Goodwin Oscillator paper. So yeah, so that's it for now. So um, I think in the next video, we're going to begin talking about um, stochastic modeling and, uh, and sort of applications of that. Um, 
Yeah, so thanks for watching.